Hey Waldwick, Brett's here, and this is video two. We are going to go over the software that you are going to use to make laser etchings and engravings. So let me shrink my face and look at that. Okay, so it's called Lightburn. It's got a dragon. It's beautiful. We open it up, and it comes with the so uh, this software comes with the printer. Um, it's fairly intuitive. It takes a little bit of time to get faster with things, but there's two basic areas, maybe three sections that I want to talk about. First thing is your layout. So this is kind of where you set up what you're going to be printing. Um, I may say printing, I mean engraving, you get it. This is the layout of the actual print bed, the laser tray that where the laser can go, and it's measured in millimeters. By scrolling the mouse up and down, you see that the ruler stays there but the numbers will get more specific or more precise. 150 by 250, this is the center point of the laser. Right here are all your drawing tools. So, if you want to draw using the software, you use these tools over here. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put some text. I'm going to go get some old English text because I'm fancy like that. I'm going to say ruts. You can change the height of it in millimeters. Uh, you can change uh, the bold, italic, size, whatever you want. Um, here, you have basic shapes, so click and drag. Very straightforward to use this part of the software. And then you can select objects, move them around, rotate them, whatever you need. So that's basically the drawing area. Here you have some loading type things, edit your image type things. Uh, what you can do if you just hover your mouse over, like a lot of the software, it'll give you a hint as to what it is. So, if I wanted to flip it, I would do my mirror. Oh, but I did the box, so let me flip it. There you go. Um, basic there. Here, it works the same as anything else. You would load an image, you would load uh, designs that you've done, and place it on the layout. So, I'm not going to go over that. Section 2. Actually, area two is going to be the entire right side of the screen. This section up here, cuts. This is going to be where you set your, your specifications to the laser on how intense you want the burns to be. So let's go through this. I've never done more than one layer, so I'm a newbie. But mode, you have cut and you have scan. And then scan and cut. Never use scan and cut. Scan would work like a desktop ink printer where one line at a time it's laying down the dots. Well, for this, it would be, it starts at the bottom, and it's, it's going to laser burn one layer, then another layer, then another layer, then another layer. That is required for doing pictures with grayscale. Uh, cut would be that it just works like a 3D printer, and it does the outline of your object. Uh, speed and power are important. But let's, uh, let's put up this menu. If you double-click in that section, you're going to have the ability to do more or fewer passes. So if you need to cut deeper, like wood or thick cardboard, then you may want to do an increased number of passes as opposed to slower speeds, which probably are more likely for a fire. So uh, you can also input all your information there, but I'm not doing that. Uh, cut information. So the bottom part of the cuts window, you're going to see a couple of boxes. Priority, I don't, never used it. Support is going to be the bottom of your tray. The silicone rubbery mat, it's the thickness of that mat in millimeters. So one centimeter or 10 millimeters. Go to the next column, speed, millimeters per second. How fast is the laser moving? If the laser has more time, to, or if the laser is moving really slowly, it has more time to burn the material. So if you want to cut thicker or denser materials, uh, you would want to slow down the speeds here. Luckily, I'm also making a cheat sheet for you so you know what settings to use for different materials. But just know that if you need something to burn less, it should probably be faster. Next one, power max. I'm not telling you what the power does because I think it's self-explanatory. Material, millimeters, this is essential because if you don't do this, you could, you could possibly break the laser engraver. Uh, 
if I were trying to engrave a piece of wood that's this thick, it looks like three quarters of an inch, uh, and I don't tell the machine, then the laser is going to go down thinking that there's no thickness to this material and it's going to slam that lens right in there. You don't want that. No one wants it. So what do you do? You get this handy dandy ruler that I left for you and you measure the thickness of the material in millimeters. So here, this one ends up being just about 20 millimeters. I would input 20, typing there, it's tough. 20 millimeters. Cool. So that's that section, that section. Let's go down to the bottom right. This is where you actually engage the laser to do your cuts. So you have a play button, makes sense. Pause button, makes sense, makes sense. Uh, frame, I believe it sends the laser around what you're doing. I've never used it in a way that I wanted to use it. If you wanted to make a fancy looking, like actual frame to whatever you're engraving, I would design it before you put it into this. Optimized cut path is good because it'll save you time. Uh, job origin, I wouldn't change any of these because absolute coordinates, it, uh, it works well. Works well, no issues. At the very bottom, you're going to see a library. And a library is useful if you're using material that we haven't used before, or if you just don't want to go through the process of telling it how many, how many repeat layers to do. So what you would do, you press library, you find the material that you're going to do. Let's say I was doing cardboard. I would go to the card, bleh, I would go to corrugated card, and here it's measured in three millimeters. So it's three millimeters thick. I say cut, assign to layer, boom. And it has automatically changed my settings in a way that it's default. Once again, go to the cheat sheet, make sure the settings are the way that this engraver has been working properly. Okay, so at this point, you've learned the layout. We've got the cutting settings, and then we have the cut control. Before you print, you must go to the left hand side to this it almost looks like a GPS icon this is going to set the laser physically in the engraver where your objects going to be why should you do this because you want to make sure that your laser does not fall off the material so I always put this at the top left corner bottom right corner anywhere that it, my image juts out and I check that the laser is over my material if the laser is not it's just going to burn through things so to summarize everything, the process is, number one, get your image into the layout. Number two, use the library or the settings panel to set up your laser engraver to cut the material you're going to use, including the depth. Uh, then you check to make sure the laser is fitting on your material for the way you have it laid out. You check that the button is engaged for the laser itself on the casing, and then you press start.